Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for the latest Junior All-Star Season Preview Show. With me today, I have the Eastview Girls Basketball Team. Hello, Eastview. I will have them introduce themselves. We'll start with Coach. Hi, I'm Molly Casper. And players, we'll start with Robin. Hi, my name's Robin. I'm a senior this year. And then we'll have you go popcorn to say who will have introduced themselves next. Okay, popcorn Savannah. Um, hi, I'm Savannah, and I'm a sophomore. Caitlin, we'll have you go next. Hi. hi I'm I'm oh, <laughs> my bad. We'll start with Caitlin with a C, and then we'll go Caitlin with a K. Hi, I'm Caitlin, and I'm a junior this year. Okay. Hi, I'm Caitlin Schaefer, and I'm a junior this year. And last but not least... Um, I'm Kylie and I'm also a junior this year. Coach, I just had a, like a flash of your life having to say like two different Caitlin's. I'm like, that one just threw me off a little bit. So I got the, I got to feel like what a coach feels like sometimes. So what we'll do is we always start with talking a little bit about last year. We always say crazy year, a COVID year, wearing masks. I would make the joke. I think the players are thrilled the masks are gone. Coaches probably wish they could keep them a little bit. So they could sneak a few things that refs can't hear, but we'll, we'll, we'll work with that. Coach, what, what did you, would you say you learned about your team from last year that you can take forward into this new year? Um, I think we can probably take, um, you know, just a lot of attitude things in regards to like not taking anything for granted. Um, we talked a lot about last year about how we went to digital learning when season started. And so we just, I think, came to basketball practice every day with just genuine joy of just getting to be with other people face to face and having that experience. And so um, this year, obviously we're back in the building and things are different. And so I just want to get to a spot where we can remember that moment and that year and um, kind of live off of that to build a better team chemistry and team bonding and just kind of joy for getting the opportunity um, where I think we we lose sight of that once the rat race of the world happens. Um, but we also return a lot of people. So um, on the court, we also get get those um, bonuses. And the mass does make a difference because they can communicate, I think, hopefully a lot better and a lot stronger. And you can read lips a lot easier where there was times where it was like, what? I mean, I'm still going to be wearing a mask. So like, it's just, they get to um, hopefully take some more leadership where you can at least have, have those parts. So kind of taking some of those aspects actually more than even just any of the skill stuff and kind of transferring it over. And then Robin, I'll have it from the player's perspective, you know, like coach talked about having that joy coming in every day, being appreciative, you know, from your aspect of the player and for the team, you know, how is that you think going to help this year and kind of as, you know, one of a veteran players, how do you make sure that's kind of at the forefront of everything you guys do this year? Yeah, definitely. As a senior, I definitely feel that like, like this is my last year, you got to make the most of it. And especially when that could have been taken away prematurely last year. It really was like an eye opener. Like this is not everything is guaranteed for sure. And as that, I just hope to. Sorry, I'm in the learning You're comment good. now. You're good. Um, but um, just passing on to the younger people, just sharing the joy for it and enjoying it while it's here, and being the teammate that you want to meet at practice every day. So we're at the season. Almost at the season. It's coming up. I will say, and this goes out to the players or coach, anyone. It, what would you say is there a game that you have circled? It, if someone's in the, if someone's going to be at an Eastview game, you want to be in the house for this one. Good rivalry game, just a game that everyone kind of has that they want to, you know, show up a little bit more for. Or the kind of the next game is the, ne you know, the most important one. Players thinking about it. <laughs> Coach, do you have one? Any game that you're like? I was going to say I can speak speak first. Um, I I think we've ran our program in a way that um, the next one is always the most important one. I mean, I know that's really a lame answer and maybe cliche, but or, yeah, but it, it just really is. That's just how I think our whole coaching program has always looked at things of just when can we get better? Um, cause every, every opportunity we're together is a learning opportunity. So it's not like I'm going to be like, Oh, that team or that team. Cause, um, in some of our best years, we've actually grown more in games that people 
outside of our gym just did not care about, you know, but um, it was kind of where we were at in the season, emotionally, physically, um, what we needed to improve on. So I, I wish I could give you a better um, <laughs> circle that date. Maybe the girls, I'm sure we, we obviously have rivals and things that we look forward to, but um, we, I really try to emphasize and we try to emphasize just, you know, in the end, it's going to be, how are we going to get better and be at our best when the time comes. So, but another girl could answer that and maybe feel a little differently. I'm sure we do have some games <laughs> we're looking forward to. Our conference is so tough. So it's like every game is, I mean, every game you're looking forward to, I, I think opportunity to play. Players, any, any games you guys have circled anything that, you know, get a little more hyped up for a little more Savannah smiling. I feel like there might be one she wants to say. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. For me. Oh, sorry. Kelly. No, you can um, go. Okay. For me, the Lakeville North game is definitely like one I have circled. I think, you know, there's always been some rivalry between us, but I think that's my biggest one. So make sure I'm in the gym for Lakeville North game noted. Kylie. Um, I think just any really of our, um, like our c conference games, you know, um, because in the end, those like, those are the ones that really matter. Um, and I think that we always look forward to like playing a conference team, um, especially because we get to play each team twice. So, you know, um, if the first game goes like uh, how we want it or not how we want it, you know, like the second time around is when we really get to like, you know, see what we did wrong um, uh, or things we need to improve on the first time. Um, for the second one. And then coach speaking, you know, you said next game is the next important one. That kind of leads into my next question. I always say some coaches have different mentalities. Some of them say, we want to put our goals out there, you know, right out in front. And this is what we're going to do every day to work towards that goal. But some say, no, we worry about day to day, game by game, practice by practice. And if we take care of the little things, the big things take care of themselves. Do you fall more kind of in the middle on one side or more on that? I mean, I guess I probably I'd say we fall in the middle. I think these two years have been um, so different that we have to kind of get back to what we were before, which I'm sure you hear a lot in these interviews. Um, <laughs> but we obviously have um, and I don't want to even say goals are more sort of standards where we think, OK, if we hit these standards on a daily basis, then we do think it takes care of itself. Um, when we don't, then obviously we think we're struggling. We're not doing as well. We need um, you know, to refocus on this. Um, and I think part of everything that I've tried to emphasize and I believe now, which maybe I did in the beginning of my coaching was just the process. Um, we have to enjoy it, right? When we won state in 2018, I should know that date better. I think 2018, I think um, it Eber, was just, right? with a yep. Eber, correct? <laughs> yep. And so, um, with that group, just enjoying the process and then you're just going to end where you want to. And the, the whole kind of we joked about not chasing waterfalls um, because if you chase the waterfall and the beauty at the end, you're just going to miss all the beauty on the way. And um, sometimes the beauty is really hurtful and painful and ugly, but it's um, where we need to be. So I guess I'm an in-between, but more of the, the process to the big picture is the way that I look at things. And then Caitlin, you know, from the, Caitlin with a C, I'll say, sorry, Caitlin with a C from the player's perspective. Well, you know, coach mentioned a little bit, what are some of those, I would say, expectations or non-negotiables that the program has that, you know, from the player's perspective, you guys understand this is not, you know, when we're on the court, it's we do this or we're not on the court. Um, yeah, so I know one thing that our coaches always emphasize on is having our cape on all the time. And that stands for like coachable attitude, preparation and effort. So really the expectation for us is to just be able to have that mentality to go into it and be like, okay, well, if I make this mistake, I know I can be coachable on it. And I'm going to have like a good attitude about if like one of my teammates calls me out. And then also that's like leading to having a connection with each other and where we feel comfortable enough to like call each other out. And this one goes out to any of the players, getting to know the team a little bit. Who's that hype person on the team? A big and one, a big block, huge shot. Who's, you know, doing the, you know, the double flexes? Who's doing that on the team? Any of you, can, I'll let any of you answer it. I'm going to go ahead and say Kai's a pretty good, Kai's a pretty good hype person. Any rebuttal, any add to that, Kylie? 
Uh, I think that, um, well, especially, uh, especially focusing on this season, like maybe instead of like having one hype person that needs to be all of us on the court, you know? So uh, I think that would be uh, really impactful if all of us were that hype person, um, because I can't imagine like how much more of an impact it's going to have. So, yeah. I want to say from the summer, if I see Savannah give someone flexes, I want to be at that game. Um, Coach, I have a story about her from this last summer or kind of fall. They had the nickel dickel three on three tournament. She hit the game winner and I would have been in the person's face. She's hitting this over D1, Nia Holloway. I'd have been in their face. I'd have let everyone say she just walked off like it was just a normal bucket. No issue. And I'm like, I'd have been flexing. Uh, So if anyone gets Savannah Flex. I want a video of that. I want to be at that game. That's what I want. Well, I will say, good job, Savannah. And and we try to control a lot of our emotions as we hype each other. We don't hype at other people. But I mean, Savannah, I was going to say, is a hype person in regards to if and we was it her eighth grade year when everyone was at my house and we did those minute to win it games, and the (laughs) JV squad won, and she was like flexing on like (laughs) in the basement on the pool table to win the Oreo, you know, from the nose to the mouth, like all this crazy stuff for the mummy wrap. So I will give her that. So she flexes when it's like really important, you know, in those moments, it's just, we just can, we expect to hopefully win and be successful. So we don't need to, we don't need to be in anybody's face because, because we expect it. That's why she walked off. Like it was nothing. I mean, I was in the stand and I'm like, I wanted to flex four. I'm like, you just hit a game winner. And so I was, I said, that was entertaining. That was one of my favorite parts. So. And then to the next one, coach might have answered, so I don't know if I'll get an answer. Is there anyone that does healthy trash talking? Not anyone that maybe seeks it out, but if another team has something to say, this person's not afraid to let them know, hey, we're on the court, you know, kind of with them, or is that we just let our game do the talking? I mean, I'll have to ask them if they hear anything or if any of them talk, but I mean, I've really, when I was a player and as a coach, like, you want to talk crap to me, that's fine, but then I'm going to go put a we're going to hopefully score in your and on the other end. So that's, that's the way that I always do it. Cause you really can't control the other person, but you just, I don't, that's the way that I approach things, but that doesn't mean that's going to be everyone, but um, we hope to obviously can smirk at them, smile and be like, <laughs> all right, like now you're going to have to stop us on the other end or do what we're supposed to be doing down there. So that's, that's how I approach things. I think that's a better that's almost a better way to trash talk. Like you're not bothered and then you just can go up and be like, all right. See, I should do that. Cause I feel like at life, when I'm at lifetime living my basketball fantasies, I'm trash talking, but can't back it up at all. So that's my worst, that's my worst trade. I'll trash talk, but I have zero points. So I'm doing well there. (laughs) And so we'll get, you know, I like to get to know the players a little bit more kind of thing in terms of, you know, kind of, on the court, but in basketball in general. So this goes out to each player. Is there a player, male, female, high school, college, pro, and you know, college, anything, even other high school players that you would say you model your game after, kind of enjoy watching, kind of anything of that nature? We'll start with Kylie. Um, well, I don't know. I'd say in general, like I have a lot of, uh, you know, professional and college players I look up to, but I suppose um, the ones that I could really uh, actually look up to and get like that personal thing was, was probably the uh, basketball players. um, Some of the senior girls like um, Macy, Macy Gebert and like Emma Carpenter when I was an eighth grader, um, because just watching them play and how they, you know, were so smart with basketball and like knowing like where to go and like what to do in each situation really um, helped me. You know, it really inspired me to like want to know more. Um, about the game of basketball and just watching them even now um, in college you know um, watching um, Macy you know um, last year I like watched um, some of her games Um, just seeing them like play it's it's really cool to watch and kind of just know that well I had that experience with them Um, and they just inspired me to like work harder in general. Caitlin with a K. Um, yeah, there's a lot that I have kind of looked up to. Um, I think a big one for me from East U was Cassidy Carson. Um, she was a huge person I looked up to just from knowing her, like me being very young and knowing her and how she got into the program at a young age and became super successful. Um, and me and her became like very close off the court too. 
And so that just made it even, uh, she was a person that I just looked up to on and off the court when it came to school. And then on the court, I mean, she was just so successful. And um, watching her now at SDSU is just awesome to see, especially now that she's playing with um, Macy. So that's just awesome to see two um, alumni from ECU playing together. And yeah. Robin? Um, I really look up to Jessica January. I did a lifetime camp with her one time. And obviously she's not the biggest girl on the court and neither am I. So when she gets in the posts and stuff, it really like inspires me to oh. like, hey, I can do that too. And just being with her to talk about that kind of stuff has really inspired me and just seeing how hardworking she is that as well. Caitlin with the C. Yeah, I would also say Cassidy was a big one for me to look up to um, just because she was so passionate about what she did and she always she always brought 100% effort and attitude to every practice, every game we had. And then another college player I would say I look up to, I really like Haley Van List's game. She's cool. always very passionate and you can just definitely tell with everything she does. And then Savannah. Um, for me, um, for high school, you know, I've always looked up to Cassidy coming in like my eighth grade year, um, not really knowing anyone. It was um, Cassidy just kind of took me under her wing and just kind of, you know, helped me get to know some of the girls and like East View's culture. Um, but I'd have to say like professional from a young age, it's always been Maya Moore, um, you know, she just her skills and I've always just watched her and like loved her style of play. I was waiting for a Candace Parker there. I felt a very similar game kind of, you know, kind of inside outside handles. I was waiting for a Candace Parker, but I like, as a Link fan, I'm okay with the Maya Moore one too. And so then coach, you'll get in on this next one, but here we'll start with the players. Is there now Minnesota basketball girl or Minnesota girls basketball history, past or present? A player that you haven't had a chance to play with that if this was that if you had a chance to play with this is who that player would be we'll start with robin oh geez um i never got a chance to play with megan wallstead but i definitely would have loved to play with her um she's just like such a leader out there even like when she was an underclassman at ecu you saw that leadership um, on the court and off the court and just, yeah, Megan Walstead, definitely. We'll go Caitlin with a C. Um, I never got a chance to play with Madison Gebert and I think that would be so amazing just because she was also so successful with everything she did. And just like her sister Macy, great shooter, that's something that I always would love to do. I'd always love to just learn from the best. If I was a coaching on the staff with Matt, Madison Gieber and I was always worried she was gonna have backcourt violations from how far she shot it out. I'm like, her heels are on the, like almost a half court line. She's still drilling them. So Savannah, who's your one player? Um, this might sound a little like cliche in a way, but um, I, have like wanted to play with my sister Ayana Gardner she went to DSL you know I think we would have just worked so well together and her freshman year she got to play with our sister Anika and they worked really well in the court so I think that would have been fun to play with her. Caitlin with a K. Um, there's a lot of people that um, <laughs> I think are amazing but I would say like two would be uh, Maddie Gieber because I've just heard so much about her and like watched her growing up. Um, like Caitlin said, she was always so successful and just an amazing shooter. Um, and then another one would maybe be like, I would say maybe like Molly Morganson from Farmington, um, watching her play like as a point guard. Um, she was just, I don't know, she was always super like smooth with her game and stuff. And now um, watching her at Creighton, she'd be a person that I'd really like to play with on the court. Kylie. Um, for me, it'd probably be Mariah uh, Alapate because uh, watching her is like, you know, she was like the hype girl. Um, <laughs> and she, I, I went, remember watching her and she kind of inspired me to like, just go hard. You know, it doesn't matter like um, if you maybe mess up on a play or, you know, sometimes you lose where you're going, but like she always gave 110% and you could tell when she was playing. 
Um, and that's someone I definitely would want to play with um, just because uh, I want people out on the court that are like willing to give it all. So, yeah. And coach, you get a two-parter, a player in the Minnesota girls basketball history that you wish you would have got a chance to play with. And then a co player you wish you would have had a chance to coach. It can be the same player. Okay. Um, play with actually um, one of my favorite players. I, Molly, that was a good one. Caitlin, um, but Ray Johnson from St. Michael, um, who then went to Iowa State, was always, um, we played against her, I think, three years, um, and she was just always one of the players that, I mean, I really respected, obviously was very successful, did really well, but I think off the court, um, I remember there was maybe a tournament she had to miss for something because she went on a family vacation, and it just, I think it was a breath of fresh air of... <laughs> You know, she just came from a family that, yeah, respected basketball and she was a hard worker and she's really good, but also realized that, um, you know, one day I still will just have my family. So I've just always really respected her and I played against her. I mean, I coached against her, um, but other than that, I'm not really met her. Um, as far as coaching, who would I have coached? That's like a, that's a tough one. I don't want to just pick the same one because that's just kind of lame <laughs> if I do that. Um, I guess it would have been fun. I will say this. I guess, and this is everyone else is saying it, but Maddie Gebert would have been fun to coach and maybe just that group just because I coached her sister. Um, so it would have just been fun to see the different personalities. And um, Macy was able to be so successful, um, you know, and how hard to follow in your sister's footsteps. And I think it would have just been fun to see the personality um, differences because they obviously are both two very, 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 very successful people in our program um, with their stuff all over our history books. So um, just because of it, I got to coach Macy, I think it would have been fun to coach her um, and again, just see how different and unique they are. But um, that would have been, that would have been pretty cool. I like it. And now players, I always like when the players kind of talk about their teammates, see what, you know, kind of maybe the player doesn't know what the other teammates see in them or kind of what they see on the court. We'll start with Robin. Describe Caitlin with a K on the court, what she brings for you guys. So Caitlin's super good communicator, especially on defense and stuff. She'll like tell you where you need to be, tell you where you need to go. I can count on her to stop her player and always be in help for me and all our teammates. It's just super valuable to have someone you can trust on the opposite side or on help side, that kind of thing. Caitlin with the K, what's it like having that quiet assassin Savannah on the court for you guys? Um, Savannah is um, super, I feel like dominant on the court. She can play all positions. Um, which is super just nice to have on the court. Um, she's definitely um, super, like, she's definitely a leader on the court, even at her young age. She shows that leadership on the court, telling you where you need to go on offense, telling you where you need to go on defense, even if she's not even running the play. She's super helpful, too. Um, like, she'll call out plays if she needs to. If she's the one bringing up the ball, she'll take that role and do what she needs to do for the team, um, which is a great leader to have on the court. Savannah, describe Kylie out on the court. What does she bring to the team? Um, Kylie always brings a lot of energy on the court. You know, whenever, like, you know, we're in a rough patch in a game or something, you can always just, like, count on Kylie, like, always bringing that energy. And, you know, I... I'd say she's like a smaller post, but she still like dominates in her position. You know, she still like is, she can play wing though. You know, she's just very, um, I'm blanking on the word here, but you know, she brings a lot of energy and like she can play multiple positions and she's just like a great teammate to have on the court. Kylie, Caitlin with a C, what does she bring to the court for you guys? Oh man, I like to call Caitlin my uh, my shooter because you know I, if I, I'm getting her the ball and she's putting in the three, like 99% of the time is going in. So like she's someone that I'm confident to have like shooting or like passing the ball to on the court. And she's always like, um, you know, when you go off um to the bench or like when you know it's halftime, you know, I always like, um, she has this connection where she's like she says good job, like let's keep going. You know, she has those words of encouragement that can really help. You know if you're in a tight game and also like she just brings energy like I, I always look over and like she's like cheering as hard as she can and then when she's playing in the game she's just like 
watching. She's ready. She's very smart about the game of basketball. Um, very fun player to play with, for sure. Caitlin with the fee, what's it like having Robin for you ladies out on the court? What does she bring for, to the team? Gosh, Robin is our hard hat player of the year. She's always giving everything she has. She's really just putting her body always for the team. She's sacrificing what she has just to make that one play. She's always energetic. She's super strong with her all of her drives. And I know she's working on those one dribble days. Yeah, she's just overall a great player to have. And so all, this goes to all the players, any or all. What is it like with coach? Give me a little bit of insight into coach. What, you know, on the bench, you know, at practice, you know, describe coach a little bit. What, you know, what does she bring to you guys? And, you know, in terms of X's and O's, but, you know, kind of stuff like that. Oh, I can go. Um, man, Casper, she's like the best. She, she keeps it real with you. Like she's not going to sugarcoat anything with you. Um, and that's like the best thing I think a coach can have is when they can tell it to you straight, but you also have that amount of respect with the coach. I can like a hundred percent say that, um, all of the players respect Casper as a coach. And that's something that you build through like, um, the years and like experience you have coaching. Like I knew before I joined the program, um, that she was a great coach. And I know that now, um, after playing for so long, um, she's someone that you can look in the eye and you're like, I, I trust her advice. I know what she knows what she's talking about. Um, and she's also someone that um, builds real life connections. You know, some coaches, uh, they only come to coach and then like your personal life is just uh, separate. But she um, she's constantly like asking like how you are checking in on your school, your personal life. Um, and that's really something that I respect um, for her as a person. So, yeah. And coach, then we'll come to you. Well, why was it important to, do you feel to have that, you know, connection off the court as well as on the court? You know, why is that something that you strive to make sure you have with the girls? Um, I guess I think relationships build trust, um, which is probably a common answer, but also, um, I mean, we spend a lot of time together and if we were just coaching, um, you know, I think that's part of the whole process and all those things like my favorite um memories now of coaching are you know Megan Walstead and Andre Abrams coming over to meet our newborn um you know or whoever it is from the past um is coming over and just having those relationships of um the seniors that I coached my first year are the ones who were like the first people to meet all of my children <laughs> um but it just so I guess um having those relationships just has always been the reason why and and on the on the flip side as well as if you have that trust then you can you know you can be more successful on the court um you can have those relationships but um yeah so at the end of the day that's what's going to you know, when it's all said and done, basketball will be done one day for all of us, me coaching, them playing. Um, so what are we going to kind of have left and what has this time meant for us? And um, I think, you know, hopefully I can somewhat be a role model for them to be successful at their next stage of life of, you know, we need, I don't want to just be a coach, want to be something more. So um, I had that one coach that had that for me, you know, that I'm still close with and hopefully can have that with multiple players that run through our program. I like it. Well, ladies, I will give you some of your afternoon back. So we're going to end it with a word, with one word. And I'll say this. The 2021-2022 Eastview girls basketball team will be successful if we do what? We'll start with Robin. Communicate. Caitlin with a K. Two word, but play together. Kylie. Uh, work, work really, really hard. Savannah. Bring energy. Caitlin, what's the C? Trust each other. Coach, the team's going to be successful if they do this. First of all, I'm not a one word type of person <laughs> or coach. Either. They can all tell you that. Um, oh my gosh. I guess I, if I'm gonna use one word, I, I'll use the word standards. If I can't elaborate into multiple words, that's what I'll say. <laughs>
a couple of them snuck in a couple words so you could do that too if you like yeah no I just think if they the standards of you know life and basketball and you'd hate to say the word buy-in but um you know they've, we've all got to figure out a lot of they're we're all just growing up right so they got a lot to figure out but if we can live up to the standards we set for each other I'm going with standards I like it so ladies, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking your time to do this. I see a great season ahead of you. I mean, Savannah is going to be, you know, the quiet assassin. Coach is going to be on the sideline. Kylie and me are going to be doing these at Earth the Lakeville North game. So I feel like it's going to be a good season. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time. I really appreciate it. And good luck this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a yeah. great rest of your Monday.